guys, Doug from Pine Tree Line Outdoors. We are here in my hometown of Sudbury, Ontario, and I'm here today to tell you a little story about how astronauts came to my hometown. So as the story goes, as the story I was told as a young person, the astronauts came to Sudbury for this reason. The rocks. The black rocks of Sudbury, very little uh, green at that time, long ago, uh, a lot more now. But uh, they came here because, you know, they could uh, practice walking on the rocks or driving a lunar module around the rocks of Sudbury and it would be uh, replicating the surface of the moon. That's what I was told and that's completely false. That is not why astronauts came to Sudbury. Today guys, I'm gonna tell you the real story why NASA sent astronauts to Sudbury in the early 70s. Stick around if you wanna find out. It's an interesting story. So back in 1968 uh, to 1970, an experiment took place around the world using 180 different locations uh, where people would operate a telescope to take pictures of a satellite that uh, was put into space by NASA to orbit the Earth at 1,000 kilometers. This experiment was done to determine how round the Earth actually was. And it was determined to be round, although the North Poles and the South Pole were found to be a little bit flatter than what they expected. Sudbury, Ontario, Canada was chosen to be one of these locations, and that's what this location is right here. And that's kind of what started um, like a history with NASA for Sudbury. And next would be the coming of the astronauts to Sudbury. Why would astronauts come to Sudbury, Ontario, Canada? According to geologist Robert Zepp, 1.85 billion years ago, Sudbury was hit by a gigantic meteorite traveling at approximately Mach 100, which would have the same force as several tons of TNT. It would have wiped out virtually everything within 800 kilometers or 500 miles. Rocks the size of footballs have been found as far away as Michigan, Minnesota, and Ohio. The meteorite punched a hole in the Earth's crust measuring 60 kilometers long and 15 kilometers deep. This impact caused molten concentrations of nickel and copper to creep up to the top to fill the crater. Mining started in 1886 after a blacksmith working for Canadian Pacific Railway, which was being built at the time across Canada, noticed a rich deposit of nickel ore. Sebri has become the nickel capital of the world as a result of a gift delivered from outer space. In the 1960s, NASA, the North American Space Agency, decided it needed to train astronauts who were former test pilots about geology. And the best way of doing that was going on field trips where they could learn on-the-spot training. And they went to places like Iceland, Arizona, Oregon, Hawaii, Alaska, California, New Mexico, and Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. Geology was now going to be the basis for going to the moon. That brings us here, guys, to Onapin Falls, Ontario, at High Falls. This is High Falls. And this is where the astronauts came, and this is where they trained. I'm going to show you around show you some of the things we've been talking about. why this area is so interesting to NASA and the reason they sent the astronauts here were these shatter cones conical fractures found in rocks these originated by the intense shocking of the rock from a meteorite impact in Sudbury many range in size from several meters to a few centimeters while in the area of High Falls and Onaping the crew also stopped along Highway 144 to look at rock outcrops where there is more evidence of the actual impact. In 1971, NASA sent the first group of astronauts to Sudbury. It was the Apollo 16 crew. And they were sent here for field training and worked exclusively with geologists from the biggest nickel producer, Inco. When Apollo 16 finally did make its trip to the moon, Commander John Young held up a piece of moon rock at one point and radioed Houston saying, this looks like Sudbury rock. In May of 1972, NASA sent Apollo 17 crew astronauts to Sudbury. Apollo 17 was going to be the last mission to the moon. Their assignment was to look at meteorite impacts on the moon. Apollo 16 crew would attend here, Creighton, and traverse the footwall at South Creighton Mine. 
This area displays veins of glassy breccia produced by the impact. The crew would also attend here, Kelly Lake, where they take a four-hour walking tour in the crater wall, which displays breccia and other shatter cones. The other area of interest for both Apollo 16 and Apollo 17 astronauts was the area of Lake Wanapate, which unbelievably was created by a meteor just 37 million years ago, about 1.8 billion years after the Sebri Basin was formed by that original meteorite. The impact was much smaller. Perhaps only a few hundred meters across was this meteorite, but it created a 3-kilometer crater that is mostly at the bottom of this 16-kilometer, 10-mile lake. The crew of Apollo 17 took a two and a half hour tour over Lake Wanapate in this NASA Gulfstream jet. Their main focus was information and the fact that breccia are now intermingled with glacial deposits. On December 7th, 1972, the Apollo 17 mission launched into space on the way to the moon. This would be the final mission of NASA's Apollo program. It was the final manned launch of the Saturn V rocket. The Apollo 17 crew spent three days on the moon. To this day, this is still the most recent time humans traveled beyond low Earth orbit. Moving forward, we are into a new generation of exploring and adventure. With the work of SpaceX and NASA, the reality of humans going to Mars is real and will happen. To think that my hometown of Sibri, Ontario, Canada played a role in this is amazing. And though we can't adventure and explore into outer space, we can certainly adventure and explore into our outdoors. <music>